It's Mother's Day 2021 here in South Africa and I know also in the States. Um, yes, Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Wow, what a privilege, but hey, what a responsibility. Wow is just mom spelt upside down. And I know that today many moms um, feel like their world has been turned upside down from the day that they were first entrusted with you know, the role of taking care of another human being. You know, I know that it can be quite a, um, a mixed emotions day, Mother's Day, because you know, for, for moms whose children aren't close, yeah, you know, we, we long to be with our children, you know, um, ours are, are far, far away, and um, others, you know, have moms that are in, you know, already gone on before them, they're already in glory and in heaven, and so it is a mixed, you know, kind of like emotional time for people, and um, there are those moms, um, you know, who are, their, their, their children um, are not living the, the way that they, that um, you know their moms would have loved them to live. But hey, I've got hope for you, and I'm going to be sharing God's word with you today. So yes, you know, let's just be encouraged. And um, I also want to just say, you know, if there's women that are going to be listening today, and uh, for whatever reason, you know, that you are not able to actually physically uh, bear children, I want you just to to stand strong and um, just to know that you know you can love other people's children. You can be the most amazing aunt um, to, to others, but also you can be an amazing, uh, you know, foster care mom and that kind of thing. And so, yes, yeah, I just shared today, I want you just to, I'm going to actually start off with, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to read um, just a small portion of Isaiah 54. So, yeah, let's just bow our heads. Father, this morning, I'm so thankful, Lord, that I can deliver the word, your word, um, this morning. I'm thankful, Lord, that, yes, that you've entrusted it um, to us. And Father, Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would just um, come in and that you would minister um, into homes today. Um, let this be a joyous occasion, Father God. It doesn't matter where our children are right now. We know, Lord, that you are faithful. And so, Father, today I just pray for each mom that might be listening in today, but at the same time for each dad that listens in and for each even a single person that listens in, that they were able to glean something from this and that they would be encouraged. So I bless them today and all God's people said, Amen, Amen. So I just want to start off by reading uh, just a, a couple of um, lines from Isaiah 54. And it says here, Sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. So that's just an encouragement, you know, and you, I'd really encourage you to go and actually read Isaiah 54. But yes, you know, um, they rejoice because being a woman, um, it's just, it's a beautiful um, I just, I love being a woman. I never want to be a man. I'm so thankful to be a woman and I'm thankful to be a mom. So today, let's just delve into God's word and um, I'm going to be sharing a couple of women in the Bible and just giving you some encouragement. And yes, um, let's just rejoice in who God created us and um, just, you know, live the roles that he has, has called us to be. Because, you know, when we accept who we are, man, life becomes so much easier. So yes, you know, when God created Eve, he knew the incredible role that she would actually fulfill in his redemptive purpose, you know, and plan for mankind. And of course, Satan knows that too. And so today, sadly, we still see so much abuse and violence against women. Do you know, God's plan was always that men and women worked together. He blessed them both and gave them the mandate, which is found in Genesis 1.28. Sadly, you know, because of insecurity, misunderstanding, deception, unbelief, we see things in our fallen world that, you know, it's not really going as planned kind of thing, you know. If you've ever read, um, I'm, I'm a reader, and, and so if you've ever read Ed Silvoso's book, Woman, God's Secret Weapon, then do yourself a favor and find it, uh, perhaps on Amazon um, you know, maybe in your local bookstore. Mine's packed away right now in boxes, so I can't kind of like get it out and just whip out some notes from it. But honestly, it's an amazing book 
you know, one of the things that he actually says in there is how women are twice refined. You know, um, when God created Adam or fashioned him, you know, he fashioned him from the dust of the earth, which really is so awesome when you think about it, you know, and those words and the, and the fact that God breathed his very breath into man. But then he made woman from a rib that he took from Adam. You know, and so in that creating, that fashioning, it's done actually twice. So he talks about woman being twice refined. You know, so perhaps that's why, you know, the men are rugged and, and rough and that, because they were, you know, made out of the dust of the earth, and yet, you know, we've been refined. Um, so, you know, I just really want to encourage women, because it's time that women, and especially moms, start to see how much they really are worth. You know, after God created Eve, he presents her to Adam. And what does Adam call her? Woman. Wow, man, she is beautiful. She's, a, she's God's gift. You know, it wasn't good for man to be alone. God made a helper comparable to Adam. You know, woman was not made to be in competition with man. We were made to work alongside, to complement each other, to fulfill a role specifically designed by God for us. You know, as a woman, man, you know, and obviously a mom myself to amazing children, you know, um, and daughters in love and amazing sons, and I'm a granny to precious grandsons, you know, I know firsthand the huge responsibility that we have as moms in raising children. You know, each generation is faced with different challenges. You know, and I want to honor every mom. And when I say mom, I'm talking to every mom, whether you gave birth, you know, to your child um, or your children or whether they were gifted to you by the way of adoption or foster care. You know, motherhood has been pretty tough this last year, you know, when we look around us. Man, you know, we see, you know, more and more women are obviously employed in the corporate world, you know, when my children were born back, you know, what's it now, it was 38 years ago, it is 38 years ago, um, you know, back then women weren't really in the corporate world. I did go back to work and I remember just being kind of like frowned upon a bit and looked, you know, down on, but hey, you know, I, I'm thankful um, for, for what I was able to do for my children. But you know, motherhood has definitely looked so different this year. And um, there's been so much pressure on moms, way more than, than previous, you know, as you've had, had to, you know, be working from home. You've had to then still obviously be trying to do, you know, handle your kids' homework as you've had to homeschool them, you know, then taking care of, the, of your family. And that. It's been an incredible year. And I want to commend each and every one of you. Um, I want you to know that God sees what you're doing. He hears your heart's cry. I also want you to know that he rejoices over you with singing. And you know, to those husbands and fathers and grandfathers who are supporting um, the moms and the women, the wives, and they're encouraging them and they're showering them with love, thank you for doing that. To those who are not, it's time to step up the plate. Because I want to tell you this, men, God sees, God hears, and if you want your prayers to be answered, then you need to heed um, 1 Peter 3, 7. And it actually says this. It says, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel, and I want to stop just right there and say, you know, when we talk about this weakness, it's not about, it's not about being derogatory. It's in relation to our vulnerability as women. You know, husbands, brothers, um, you know, men, you should be protecting and covering, not harming or belittling. The scripture goes on to say, and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. So men, if you're kind of like wondering why your prayers aren't being answered, maybe just check back and see how you are actually taking care of your wife. You know, it's so much easier 
to fulfill a role as a wife and as a mother when we have loving, supportive husbands. I'm so, so thankful for Pastor Dave. I'm so thankful that my, um, you know, my sons are supportive of their wives. But for those women who, who don't have supportive husbands um, and, and maybe the fathers of their children are not around, I want to say this to you. Don't lose heart, ladies. God, your maker, is your husband. Go and continue to read Isaiah 54. You know, it's a beautiful chapter, in, you know. And Isaiah 54, 5 actually says that, you know, that he's your, he's your, your maker, is your, God your maker is your husband. And then, you know, it also says in Psalm 68, verse 5, he's also a father to the fatherless. You know, throughout the word of God, we find how God used women, mothers, who had such incredible influence in the lives of their sons and their daughters and, you know, and their families. You know, can you, I'm just kind of like going to run through some of the ladies that uh, just felt prompted to speak about it a little bit. You know, the likes of Eve, imagine being the first woman to give birth to a child. <laughs> you know, nothing can prepare you for motherhood, you know. Nothing can prepare you for childbirth. Um... You know, she didn't have somebody else around that could actually even she. You know, we are often blessed to have, you know, uh, midwives and um, nurses around and, um, you know, maybe your mother or a sister or something like that. He didn't have that, you know. Well, the first woman then also to have, to be such heartache as two sons that were raised in the same home, they differed so much. And then to the extent that the jealousy causes one to kill another. Wow, devastating for sure for Eve. Ever thought of Mrs. Noah? Imagine your husband being tasked with building an ark when no one even heard of rain back then. Imagine suffering alongside of him as he's ridiculed. Imagine having all that livestock in your house for 40 days and 40 nights. Hey, where are my kids? They call them their home, the Giles Farm. But imagine being stuck in that ark um, for 40 days and 40 nights. Of course, she would have been very, very thankful that she, along with Noah and their three sons and three daughters in love, are escaping the flood that wiped out, you know, all of living creations. Imagine the role that she would have played in her family's life. Wow, incredible. Then, of course, there's Sarah, who is beyond childbearing years, we read, and then God promises her a child. She's pretty shocked. Can you imagine? And like many of us, you know, when we are nervous, what happens? We laugh. And that's exactly what she did. But of course, we also see that unfortunately, she gets impatient and unbelief sets in. So she takes matters into her own hands because, you know, she's kind of like thinking this is really crazy and it's just taking too long. And then, of course, we, we learn of Hagar and how her painful life becomes, you know, as mother to Ishmael. Because, you know, Sarah gives Hagar over to Abraham and, um, so that she can bear a child. Imagine all of that um, heartache, etc. and that, you know. But God still honors the cry of Hagar and cares for them. You know, and Sarah becomes the mother of the Jewish nation. Talk about responsibility. Yes, with every privilege, there's huge responsibilities. You know, what about Rebecca, who bears twin sons? Very different in nature. And a mom who's torn between helping one get what he desires, despite it causing pain to the other. You know, how was she shaping the lives of her sons? Thankfully, God intervenes, and you know what he still does today. He takes our mistakes as moms, because none of us are perfect, man. We've all messed up, you know, and then she, God turns them around. I'm so thankful for that. You know, what about Rachel, the mother of Joseph? She certainly must have shaped um, her son's life in an incredible way. You know, he has such influence that he saves a nation in the midst of a severe famine. And of course, there's Leah. You know, her father tricks Jacob into marrying her. Man, she endures hardship and shame. She's trying to win, you know, Jacob's love for her. God sees her heartache and her affliction. She bears four sons. One is Judah, who leads the tribe, 
that the lineage of Jesus is from. What about Jochebed, the mother of Moses, who influenced history by surrendering what she treasured most to the will of God? You know, when, when just days after our um, children were born, we dedicated them to God. And we've watched over the years as God has done incredible things in their lives. And um, I'm so thankful that we can that we entrusted our children, our sons, to, to the Lord. And of course, they've done that for their children as well. And they've committed to raise them in the ways of the Lord. Yes, a jockabed. You know, she has yeah, her treasured possession and she commits him to the Lord. What about Naomi, mother-in-law to Ruth? To Ruth, She too had her fair share of pain and suffering, yet she was an, such an incredible influencer in Ruth's life. You know, where we see Boaz marrying Ruth, Boaz becomes her kinsman redeemer and he rescues both of them from poverty, you know, we look at that, a type of shadow of Jesus. You know, in the New Testament, we read of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Imagine carrying the Son of God. Wow. Imagine raising him and watching what's going on. And then you actually, you know, have to watch him being crucified on a cruel, cruel cross. I mean, I just kind of like go, what? You know, if I was... The mother of Jesus, I would have like gone, you know, and said, you know, call him crazy, call him whatever you like, but don't crucify him. Imagine being the mother of Jesus. What responsibility. You know, her cousin Elizabeth was another woman that we can glean so much from. Imagine raising John the Baptist. You know, these women teach us so many life lessons. We need to seek out the golden nuggets as we read the word of God. You know, children, unlike things that we purchase in a store, don't come with a manual of how to care for them. God already provided one. The Bible is the best manual that we have in raising our children. You know, Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Psalm 127.3 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. So moms, I want to encourage you to immerse yourself in the word so that you, know, you can find instructions on raising children. And perhaps you know your children are already out of the home. Guess what? You can still be praying for them. All right? Believe that how, what you've um, sown into their lives, it's going to be, have been good seed and that they're going to be turning out well. Maybe, you know, maybe you had some regrets and perhaps, you know, you didn't raise them in the ways of the Lord because maybe back then you didn't know God. Guess what? God is so faithful. You just pray for your children. He can turn things around. He can send people along their path that can um, encourage them and help them. You know, God can do the miraculous, all right? You know, sadly, as moms, we often think that we have to do everything on our own. And, of course, the enemy likes to bring accusations against us. You know, as moms, we do the very, very best that we can, all right? But often we just feel it's not good enough and we believe the lies of the enemy. You know, sometimes moms have sacrificed so much and then they watch their children walk away. Those children rebel. They play the blame game and harm is caused. Moms, don't allow the lies of the enemy to bring you into condemnation. Every child has to make their own choice. You know, our responsibility is to raise them in the ways of the Lord, to shoot them off like arrows. They should be able to go and do things that we didn't even, you know, weren't able to do. But allow God to continue the work that he started in each of their lives. Just continue to pray for them. Keep speaking life into and over them. God is faithful. You know, many prodigals have come to their senses and returned home. And that might not be just to a physical home, but, but you know, they've turned back to God. You know, as a mom, I find scripture, 
You know, I, I, that's what I would do back then when I was raising young kids, young boys. You know, I would find scripture regarding certain situations. I'd write them down and then I would pray and speak the promises of God over our children. And today even, you know, that they're married and have got children of their own, we, we pray for them daily. We want the best for them. We want them, you know, to, to prosper in all areas of their life. I do recall, um, you know, back in the 80s, reading Barbara Johnson's books. Um, many of you older, you know, moms might remember her. You know, she, one of those books that she wrote was, you know, Splashes of Joy in the Cesspools of Life. And another was Stick a Geranium in Your Hat and Be Happy. She founded a nonprofit organization called Spatula Ministries. Um, it was really there to support moms um, who were, you know, going through really crazy struggles with their children. And that was kind of like, you know, she'd, she'd say in her book that, you know, she would have to, you know, scrape them off the ceiling. And that's where the kind of like thing came in, you know, the spatula ministry. You know, she had experienced in her own life adverse situations, really, really tough situations and that. But she would say, you know, that her faith and laughter was the medicine that would help her through. I have just a couple of her quotes. Um, it says, motherhood, it was never going to, sorry, motherhood, if it were going to be easy to raise kids, it never would have started with something called labor. Making the decision to have a child is momentous. It's to decide forever to have your heart go walking around outside your body. Anybody experience that? <laughs> At times, kids can be a pain in the neck when they're not being a lump in your throat. Something else she said, you know, you can get children off of your lap, but you can never get them out of your heart. And it's so true, you know. As an older mom now, man, I just, you know, when my kids are going through tough situations and that, man, it's, I feel it, yeah, when, I, when my grandkids, you know, are, are not well and we get messages and that, man, my heart is just like out there. Um, then another thing she wrote was, you know, to be in your children's memories tomorrow, you have to be in their lives today. Patience is the ability to idle your motor when you feel like stripping your gears. Anybody been there? You know, you kind of like just have to, oh, I want to explode right now. Something, you know, is taking place and you just want to lash out. But then you realize, just hold in a sec, breathe deeply, let's deal with it in a different way. And one of her other quotes was, you know, mothers hold their children's hands for a while, but their hearts forever. Children are a great comfort in your old age, and they help you reach it faster too. Love is the glue that mends broken hearts. I used to love reading her books, and um, she was just, she was really quite an inspiration. There's obviously other amazing Christian writers out there that you can, you know, tap into the resources and that. Moms, I want to encourage you to connect with other moms. You know, this whole pandemic has created a sense of, you know, loneliness, abandonment. Your kids are dealing with stuff. Um, there's a lot of stress going on. Sadly, you know, we see that women um, are, are turning to, um, you know, pharmaceutical meds just to try and cope Sadly, we see that, you know, the fastest age, um, age group, you know, that are on um, um, antidepressants and that are, are preschool kids. Mom, reach out. Don't come, just take this whole thing on yourself. Reach out to trusted friends. Get godly advice. Um, find other ways to just, you know, to try and um, help you cope um, through the situations and that. Um, sadly, yes, there are many distractions and ungodly vices out there pulling our children and grandchildren in the wrong directions. Moms, we are called to be prayer warriors. That's W-A-R-R-I-O-R-S. Not warriors in the sense of worrying and um, stressing and being anxious. You know, I am so thankful for my mom. Yes, you know, she's already passed on. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful for her. She instilled godly values and principles into my life. Was she perfect? No. She too had gone through much heartache, but she loved her children and her grandchildren. She worked hard to provide for us after my dad left when I was seven years old. She was misunderstood often. She was a no-nonsense 
say it like it is person. She called a spade a spade. She was an avid reader. She was very intellectual. She was very studious. She loved God and she loved his word. You know, at the age of 70, she actually went on her first missions trip into Africa. I believe that she actually did three trips um, despite her own physical challenges. The younger leaders that, you know, that went along with her, they loved having her there. Um, you know, they learned a lot from her. Being a mom is no easy task. You're going to be challenged. You're going to have sleepless nights. But you know the privilege of partnering with God and raising a family far outweighs those difficulties. Man, it's just, it's beautiful, you know, to be a woman. When God created woman, man was complete. Both were made in his image, male and female. Now the character or the nature of God was reflected when he made male and female. The community of the family is a reflection of the community in the Godhead. The family's identity, life and power come from God. So moms, no matter where you are right now, you know, maybe some of you, your kids have just gone off um, into this big world. Uh, maybe they're overseas. I, I want you to, to recognize and to never lose sight of your identity, your value, your worth. You know, God through Jesus validated women in a time when women were marginalized in society. Throughout his earthly ministry, women had an important role. And today, we still have an important role to play. So if you are called mom, by whoever looks up to you, know that the love, the time, the hard work that you are sowing into their lives is the reflection of the heart of God. How we respond to the challenge put before us will be up to us. My prayer is that we will be good stewards and ambassadors as we nurture those that God has entrusted to us. You know, perhaps as a mom, you've got many unmet expectations of how things should have been, how you really desired them to be. You know, perhaps you have wayward children somewhere out there and you did the very best that you could do. Children, perhaps you've got unmet expectations from your childhood and you're dealing with stuff now as an adult because of it. God wants to bind up the brokenhearted. You know, all families have dysfunctional tendencies. None are perfect, even if we did a good job in keeping things all together. My encouragement to you today is allow Holy Spirit to minister to you you know, one thing my mom taught me from a very young age, and it wasn't by instructions, but rather by watching and seeing the difficulties that she faced. And that was to separate the person from the issue. That way, I could look deeper and understand the situation from a different perspective. Forgive, release, and bless is a profound principle to live by. People are not perfect. Everyone is dealing with their own issues. Forgive quickly, hold no grudges. Do not allow bitterness to take root. You know, bitterness, it's to anger and anger to murder. And maybe it's not murder in the physical sense, but sometimes we kill people with our words and our thoughts. Forgiveness is an act of our will. Allow Holy Spirit to assist you, even if you don't feel like it. Release yourself from the hurt and the suffering. Release the other person. That way God has access to handle it on your behalf. Bless the person. Speak life over them. That way blessings can return to you. Because you know you reap what you sow. And while you have opportunity to make things right, do so. 
I've counseled so many, you know, whose parents have passed on and they were not able to make right before their parents, you know, passed on. I want to encourage you. God is in the restoration business. Yes, it takes humility. It takes trusting in his timing. It takes laying aside your unmet expectations, seeing things from a different perspective. And it takes courage to be a catalyst in seeing families restored and reflecting the heart of God in a world that is pretty messed up right now. Moms, you are loved. You are precious in God's sight. You play an enormous role in, in influencing your families. You've held things together for so long that it was kind of like just falling apart. And today I want to just pray a blessing over you. I want to pray and um, just, you know, the word says commit our ways unto the Lord. And so that's what I want to do right now. Wherever you're at, so let's just bow our hearts. Father, this morning as we celebrate moms, I thank you for each mom, for each one that is producing life into another. Lord, whether they have borne those children physically themselves, whether they are taking care of them because life has happened and maybe those children were abandoned and they've taken them in by way of adoption or foster care. Or maybe a loved one has passed away and they've got the responsibility now of taking care of others, these young children. Holy Spirit, would you just wrap your arms around them, comfort them, where there are those unmet expectations, where they are just feeling just so overwhelmed right now. Would you come in and just comfort? Perhaps they have unsupportive husbands or fathers of their children. Maybe they are present in a home but they're not really there. They're really absent fathers and husbands in different ways. I ask that you would strengthen mothers today. Maybe there's moms sitting across the world and their children are far away from them. Maybe they're sitting in, in old age homes right now. I ask that you would just comfort Holy Spirit would you just heal broken hearts? Would you just reassure them? Let them know that you love their children and that you're working things out. Lord, I know your word says that you, know, you turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the children back to the, the fathers. But Lord, I'm asking that for moms as well today. That there would be reconciliation in homes. That lives would be mended. I thank you, Lord, that you are in the restoration business. And perhaps there's parents that have already passed on and, you know, children are, are holding bitterness and unforgiveness. Today, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just help them to release, to forgive to know that their parents were just doing the best that they could, what they knew. Maybe they came from broken homes and they didn't know really how to raise their children. But I thank you, Lord, that you can take every situation and you can turn it around. And so I bless moms today. I thank you, Lord, for them. I speak life over them. I pray, Lord, that they would just experience your love in a new and a fresh way today. Bless them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Moms, yes. Rejoice because God is with you. Moms, sing because God your maker is your husband. And so I bless each one today. Perhaps if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and 
you know, you're hearing this and you're going, hey, please don't leave without inviting me to meet and have a relationship with the living God. Well, that's what I want to invite you to do today. It really just, it's, it's a heart um, coming in humble submission, recognizing that yes, you know, you've messed up. You've made bad choices. It's just about repenting before God and saying, Father, forgive me. Jesus, thank you for dying on a cruel cross, for taking on the sins of the world, which includes my sins. Today, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to lead me and to guide me. I want to be um, the person that you created me to be. And so come in today and take over my life. And um, yeah, it's really just simple like that. You know, it's not these big flowery words. And, um, and then find yourself uh, a Bible. If you don't have one, you know, reach out and let's see how we can help you. Um, but spend time in God's Word, particularly moms, you know, even it doesn't matter what age your children are. Just begin to spend time in God's Word and take hold of His promises for you and your household. And so I bless each one today. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy uh, whatever you're going to be doing, um, you know, the rest of this day, Mother's Day, um, or even the rest of the week, whenever you, you listen in. So I bless each one of you and I thank you. And um, yeah, God bless. We love you lots. Bye for now.